I don't know about you, but I feel like doing some examples of gravitational fields. And since I'm the one controlling the video, you're stuck with me. Uh, so what we're going to do here is, uh, oh, actually, maybe we should first look at this little cartoon here. So I put in, uh, isn't this Wild E. Coyote from uh, cartoons? I used to watch these as a kid. I like the first law of cartoons, right? That gravity doesn't work until you look down. You ever seen that? So he sort of walks out, and then he sort of stops. He looks and looks down. Maybe holds up a sign like, help, and then, phew, and then he falls. Obviously, that's not how it works. Ha ha. So let's actually deal with something that's a real uh, kind of question you could be asked on an exam. Um, a planet has a gravitational field that is uniform, and I'll explain what that means in a second. Uh, now we have the gravitational potential difference between the surface of the planet and a point 50 meters above is 20 joules per kilogram. That sounds a little bit crazy already, right? You're already probably starting to worry and hopefully not feeling like holding up a little sign that says, you know, help. We'll draw that actually. So uh, this is maybe how you feel, right? Maybe you feel like holding up a little sign that says help. So, I mean, these kind of questions, I think, really cause people problems, right? But let's see if we can actually figure this out. Now, we want to know the work done. This is what we're looking for in bringing a mass from a surface to another point, And you might be thinking of throwing up already. But let's just think about, remember, you have to sort of wear almost like a decoder ring and sort of look at the question. Like, All right, what do I have to do to solve this? What am I looking for? What kind of equations do I have? Remember I said you don't have to be super awesome at uh, physics to do these kind of questions. Just be good at decoding the question. In this case, we want work done, and we're given things like gravitational field. So let's quickly, just to show you how to solve this sort of as a non-expert in this stuff, uh, what's a gravitational potential difference, first of all? Do you know what letter that is? That is VG. That's what we're told here. So we're told some values of VG. And we have a distance, and we have a point, so we have some sort of delta Rs going on. Like we have some VGs and some Rs. And we want to know the work done. This is what we're looking for. So I think it helps to look at, you know, well, what are you actually looking for? You want the work done. It has to be somehow related to maybe the gravitational potential. So let's see if we can find that. So can you look in your data booklet for an equation that has W in it that has a VG? I hope you can find it. It actually goes, uh, well, let's look it up here. Where is it? Um, I'll just write it down here. So. Uh, and I think it's a good idea actually to even write down what you what you know, right? It's a good idea to write down what you're looking at. So in this case here, I'm going to write down the equation. It goes W equals M delta VG. This is the equation we're given. This is the equation that we're going to use. So if we use this, do you notice the work done then? I need to know the mass. Got it. I got that. I need to know delta VG. Uh-oh, I don't know that. So do you see how this is now the goal is to find out what's, what's this? See, I need that in order to solve W. So let's maybe look at this, what this VG means. Now, they tell me that the gravitational field is uniform. And actually, maybe before I do anything else, maybe it's a good idea to draw it. So I'm going to draw myself like a planet here, and I'm going to draw myself a point that's 50 meters above. So maybe I'll consider, I don't know, maybe this is going to be 50 meters above here. So if I do that distance right there, let's assume that's 50 meters. Then I know that the gravitational potential difference is 20. So I know that right here, it's 20 joules per kilogram. I know that that's VG here. That's the VG, you know, from going from the surface to here. That's the delta VG from, from zero, well, from the surface to here. Um, okay, now we're told basically we want to take an object and not do this. We want to bring it to a height of, uh, where is it, 20 meters above, so a little bit less than half, so maybe something like this. I'm looking for something that's 20 meters instead. I'm looking for that. Here's the problem, and it may not be clear, how, how do I deal with this? I think the key to doing this is reading this first part of the question. Gravitational field is uniform. Do you know an equation for gravitational field strength? That's this equation, G. And if you look it up in your data booklet, uh, what is it? It's a delta VG over R. This is how it goes. Delta VG over delta R, this is how it goes. And if it's uniform, what that means is it's the same at both cases. In other words, it's the same, this delta VG that we're just given with this change in R, we know that that ratio will be the same as the other one. I think that was the not obvious part. I thought that was the key part to solving this because otherwise you're kind of stuck. So do you notice then if G is constant, in this case here, we're told that G is constant because it's uniform. This is what implies that. Okay, we know that that's constant. Because it's constant, the two VG over R's can be the same. That means 
that now I can solve this. Watch carefully. If I do the VG right here, I can do 20. Of course, the negatives are going to cancel out, so we don't have to worry about the negative. So let's do the VG that we know. We know that 20 over this delta R, which is 50, that's going to be the same as the delta VG, which I'm looking for. I don't know what that is. Divided by the delta R, which I know is 20. Can you see then you can then find VG? VG is just going to be 20 times 20, uh, which is 400. Divide that by 50, I end up with, let's see, 50 into 400. Uh, that's going to be, what, 2 in 100, so 2 times 4, that's going to be 8. So VG is going to be 8, uh, keep in mind, joules per kilogram. I'm going to need this. That's my, technically, it's my delta VG. Why did I need that? Because now I can use this equation here for work. I knew that the work was equal to M, here, I'll do a different color maybe. So now I find I know that work is equal to the mass times delta VG, and I know my delta VG is 8. See, that's so. I said my work is equal to 3.5 times 8. Um, I can do that on a calculator. Let's see here. I can get uh, 3.5 times 8. Uh, what's that? Uh, that? That is 28 joules. I have two significant figures, so I guess that's enough. There we go. 28 joules. That's how we can solve this question. Let's do another one. Um, so I have one last, I think I just said two. Yeah, I have two questions for you. So uh, these are all uh, exam questions, right? So this is why it's a good idea to know how these work here. The escape speed on a planet with mass m and radius r is v. Now we want to know what's the escape speed if it has 2m and radius r over 2. Notice how often they like these sort of ratio things, right? This is a especially important equation or a question. So if we want the escape speed, maybe it helps to actually look up the equation, right? Uh, the escape speed is uh, 2gm over r. You can look that up. That's in your data booklet. That's there for v escape. So what I'm going to do is, I mean, this is, I'm going to call that just v. So in this case, I'm just going to call it 2gm over r. That's just going to be, that's just going to be v. Now, what I always like to do for these ones is set up a new equation, call it v2 maybe, you know, like a new one. That's my new situation here. And here I have square root of 2, but in, and I have g still. But in this case, instead of m, I put in 2m. And instead of r, I put in r over 2. This is what I need to do here. Now, I think it's a good idea maybe to do v2 over v. And actually, I don't like these square roots. Those are making me a little bit nervous. So actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to square both equations. This way, it's going to be a little bit easier to look at. So v2 squared is going to be, let's see, 2 times 2 is 4 gm. All that's going to be, uh, by the way, let's just uh, figure it out this one, just to make it simpler. This is um, 4 gm. And see this 2 right here? This 2 actually flips and comes on the top here. It's the 2 over r. Remember, because when you divide by a fraction, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. I'm just trying to fix this up a little bit. Because, I mean, this right here is no longer a 4. This then will be an 8. Does that make any sense? Because 2 times 4 is 8. So this is going to be here 8 gm over r divide that by 2 gm over r because that's the one that we have here so if i do this the gm over r is they all cancel out and i end up with v2 squared over v squared equals just 8 over 2 which is 4. now remember i don't want v2 squared i want v2 by itself so now i'm going to take the square root of both sides again so just to make sure it's a little bit easier take the square root of both sides i get 2 don't i so finally, I can state that, watch this here. So my new velocity, my new escape velocity is going to be just 2 times v. See that? Because my v can come over here. So to see how we were able to actually solve this? It looked really complicated. But the trick was, write yourself down an equation for what you're looking for. And if things change like this, write yourself an equation for the new one. Divide the two equations and see what cancels out. In this case, we had to do some weird stuff with the square roots and the squares, but that's it. This is how you can solve this stuff with orbital mechanics. Yeah!